Hey, YouTube, Bruce Gamora, Trial Mavid. Guys, let's get started. This video is for people who are very unfortunate and lucky. They have cars that the fuses keep blowing. This video is to give you 12 reasons why they keep blowing. If you don't have any diagnostic tools, sometimes you can just look and find things. However, I don't want to give you false hope. Most of the time when you have electrical problems, you're going to at least need diagnostic. You're going to at least need some diagnostic equipment. Cheap uh, volt meter, multimeter will get, give you a lot of help. Also, very often you end up having to take your car in anyway. But sometimes, sometimes, you know, you get lucky. And over the years, I've been lucky and I've known other people. So let, let's go over the 12 reasons that fuses blow. You may be able to find the cause yourself. So no particular order. First one, number one, wrong fuse. Maybe you never changed your fuses before. You, it's a, a car that you just bought and somebody else has put in the wrong fuse. Now it blew. You take it out and you see 15 amp, it should be 10 amp or 20 amp, whatever. You put in the wrong fuse, it blows again. So maybe you're putting in the wrong fuse. Also, on my car, I have slots that are open. No fuses are supposed to go in. If someone accidentally puts a fuse in the wrong slot, that could be a problem. Later on, you go to chain something. Well, you weren't supposed to have fuse in there to begin with. <laughs> so go to the internet. Google is your friend. Find where your fuses are in your, your car and where they go in your receptacles, your little slots, and make sure you have the right ones in there. So that, that's that from the get-go. Just check your fuse. Make sure the right one's the right place. Number two. Have you added any electronics? Have you put in new speakers and done anything electronic to your car? That is an easy solution because if all of, all of a sudden stuff's blowing and you did something, well, maybe you can backtrack and find immediately. Number three, has anybody doing any car repairs? I had people do car repairs on my car and my fuse started blowing. I looked underneath the dashboard. I found a spring hanging down, touching a wire. The wire wasn't bare, but if the spring kept touching it after a while, it would have worn out and maybe made a connection. So if anybody does a repair to your car, that is a possibility. They Maybe they mess something up. You have car damage. Maybe five years ago you got into a fender bender. No problem. But the sheet metal is touching the wires. Now, over time, it's rubbing and rubbing slowly. Then it makes you short. So five years was no problem, but then all of a sudden you're blowing fuses. Check all over your car to see if you have any damage to your car. If there's any wires touching the damage. <laughs> Rusty connectors and brittle plastic connectors. My car is 28 years old. It's a Toyota Corolla and the plastic is falling apart. It's, 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 it's not good, but the metal's still in good shape. But if you have rusty connectors or plastic connectors that are brittle and falling apart. Oftentimes when we're looking for a short, we think about wires that, you know, are stretching around the car. Just look where they end, where are they connecting to? That's where often you find the things that are, are being shorted. Also, I said you can do a lot of these without any diagnostic equipment. If you have just something as simple, $12 multimeter, you can hook these in and it has a little application where it beeps a sound whenever you're getting continuity. So you can do stuff by yourself. Um, go on the YouTube, there's tons of videos on how to use these testers. Do you have do you have a car that's been sitting for a long time? Maybe you have visitors, maybe you have little friendly animals that have terrorized your car and chewed all the wires to pieces. My neighbor's been gone for two years. I changed his battery, opened up his hood. There were snake skins all over the hood of uh, the, the engine part of his car where snakes had made a nest in his car, like <laughs> little eggs that were attached and left. So you, the animals, you, know, you sit your car too long, animals will go in there and chew up your wires just for the fun of it. So you, you if that happens to you, God help you, I don't know. You, you're going to need a lot of help. Um, do you have a really tight battery? Most of the time when your cars won't start, it's because your battery connection is loose. But if you have a battery that actually isn't secured down in your engine bay, and if your cables are really super tight, when you stop the car really sharp, the battery will move and then tug on those wires and you can end up uh, popping a connection. Your cigarette lighter, nobody smokes anymore, but everybody uses their cigarette lighter for different 
cameras and GPS and all sorts of things. And by constantly uh, putting stuff in and out of the, the cigarette lighter, you bend a little cheap metal that the, the lighter is made out of and the, the receptacle. And it's really easy to get a short in there. That's a common place. One of the most common is bending fatigue. When you're thinking about shorts, think about where do wires bend? They bend in your doors, they bend in your hood, they bend in all different places. And go look where they're bent. Maybe you can see where something is chafing and it's worn off and rubbed. Probably the number one area is your trunk and sometimes your hood because you have lights in there and wires go to your trunk and your hood. And when you shut the trunk, in my case, I slam it, you know, it shut it kind of hard. And if you have an old car and the plastic is brittle, I was having trouble with my car and I was, my fuse kept blowing and I checked several things. And then I had some other problems and I didn't continue checking and I took it to a mechanic. He immediately found the problem. It was my trunk lights. They were all uh, damaged. They were all melting. And they, I... I couldn't start my car because it kept blowing my brake fuse. And then when the brake fuse goes, you can't shift out of park. So you have to press that little uh, buy switch button near your your, your shifter. But uh, it was it would, was probably something I could have found if I continued. But still, I'm so glad I found a decent, honest mechanic here in Broward. If you ever need a decent mechanic, go to American Automotive uh, around Sunrise. Uh, check out Dustin and Kimberly there. At American Automotive, they're just super honest, reliable, and decent prices. So, a little shout out to my favorite new mechanic in Broward County. I'm not going any other place. They're really good guys. Number eleven, you could have a bad switch. Uh, the good thing about if it's a bad switch is oftentimes you can get switches inexpensively and swap them out and see if you don't have any diagnostic equipment. You can often just replace something like that. And, and, and do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> You're not a mechanic. You just take stuff out of a box and hope it works. The last one is the most fun. The wrong bulb or part. Let me tell you, years ago, my, my first car, one of my first cars was a Volkswagen camper. I replaced a taillight bulb. And then next day when I got in the car, I put my foot on the brake. The horror would blow. It drove me crazy. It took me about a half an hour until I realized maybe it was something I'd done the day before. And I checked the bulbs. The one bulb should have a single filament and another bulb should have a double filament. And I switched them. And when I did that, it changed the whole wiring on my car. So if you put in the wrong part, like we talked about switches earlier, you can put in a brake switch. And even if it's if it comes from an original manufacturer for your car, if your car, let's say, has a uh, uh, the, the uh, cruise control, you can have something in your freaking brake switch that helps operate your cruise control. So you change your, your brake switch. Now you don't have the right brake switch. Now you can't operate your cruise control. It's like who, who, you know, it's insane. So if you put the wrong part in, even though it says it's for your car and that for your year, maybe it's not your model. Maybe it's not the car that comes with the same accessories you have in your car. You need a different part. So it's a wonderful world of parts. Make sure you have the same freaking part identical down to the the tiniest discrepancy so those are 12 things and if you keep changing your, your fuses check out those 12 reasons now if none of these helped you please don't leave angry messages to me that i didn't help you at all i i said from the beginning the majority of the time you're going to have to need the diagnostic equipment or end up taking the mechanic but sometimes you get lucky hopefully some of you will get lucky as I have in the past. So I hope this was something helpful to you. Um, I put on new videos, and we've been doing our 15 years, got over a thousand videos. I put on stuff that's interesting to me or I think will give value to other people. And uh, I hope this was something like that, you uh, was something helpful. And you come back and watch more. All right, guys, oh, good luck to you. <laughs> good luck to you. Electrical problems are a nightmare on cars. And I uh, hope this was something helpful to you. And if, if you did get success with this video, please leave a comment. I'd be happy to. I'd be, I'd be thrilled to hear that there was something helpful to you. All right, guys. Take care. See you out there.